This is the final video in section 1.3 and we are still talking about functions. All of this video is going to relate to target 1.5. We're going to be looking at increasing and decreasing, max and mins, and also symmetries. So the first objective is going to be to identify where a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Now it's important to know that we read a graph just like we read a book from left to right. So if the graph is going uphill, from left to right, it's increasing. If it's going downhill from left to right, it's decreasing. And if it stays the same from left to right, it is constant. Now, when we talk about increasing, decreasing, or constant, we are going to use open intervals, meaning we're always going to use parentheses. We're never going to use x, um, I'm sorry, brackets. And we're always going to talk about the x values. So we'll go from the smallest x value to the largest x value. So we're really only concerned with the x values where it's increasing, decreasing, or constant. And we use parentheses. The reason for the parentheses is because oftentimes the ending points are a point of change, where it goes from increasing to de decreasing or decreasing to increasing, and so on. Because it's a point of change, we don't know which one it should be included with, the increasing or the decreasing. So we just call that, um, so we use a parentheses. Looking at a first example, where is the graph increasing, where is it decreasing, and where is it constant? So I just like to start on the left side and work my way through the graph. It looks like it's going downhill from negative infinity all the way here to an x value of negative 3. Um, no, that's not negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. So this graph, first of all, because we read it from left to right, is going downhill, decreasing from negative infinity to x equals negative 5. Notice we're using the x values. Now it's increasing all the way until x equals negative 2, so it's going uphill. So now we'll say from negative 5 to x equals negative 2, we're increasing. We're decreasing again until 0. So in order to say the next part of decreasing, we're going to use this union symbol, u, and it just means like and, and the next part. We're decreasing from negative 2 to 0. Looks like we switched to increasing again from 0 to 2, so again we'll use that union symbol, 0 to 2. We're back to decreasing from 2 all the way to looks like x equals 5. So once again we'll use union from 2 to 5, we're back to decreasing. And our last piece of the graph it looks like is increasing again all the way from 5 to infinity. Once again, we're using the x values to write where it's increasing, decreasing, and constant, and we're only using parentheses for that range of numbers. Why don't you try this next example, pause your video, give it a try, and then we'll check the answers. Hopefully you decided it's decreasing from negative infinity to 2, and from 2 to infinity it's increasing. This graph isn't constant at all. The next part is talking about relative maximum or minimums. Basically, that's those changing points we were just referring to. And it's where the graph switches from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And we call those a relative max or a relative min. If it's a low point on the graph, basically if the graph is kind of that, if it's a low point, then it's a min, a minimum. And if it's a high point like this, then it's a maximum. So this spot right here would be a, max, a min, and this one up here would be a max. So we'll just use the coordinates to represent um, and, uh, where they're at. So when the question says where are they, we're going to use the x and y values to represent where they are on the graph. So where are our relative minimums? So our relative minimums would be it looks like we've got three of them, one here, one here, and one there. So if I count, it looks like negative 5, negative 5 is one min. Again, the x and the y value, 0, 0 is another one. And finally, positive 5, negative 5, x equals 5, y equals negative 5. 
in terms of our relative maximums, it looks like we have two of them here and here. And those are at negative 2, 2 and 2, 2. You could use that union sign in between if you wanted to. And actually, no, let's not use the union sign. We're going to use the union sign when we talk about a range of numbers. In this case, we're just talking about some coordinates, so we won't put that in there. The next piece of this is why do we call them relative? And the reason is, is because they're only, it's only a minimum in relation to that small part of the graph. For example, 0, 0 is only a minimum in relation to this piece of the graph right in here. It's not the minimum in terms of the entire graph, and so that's why we use the word relative. So here's a multiple choice question for your Google form. I want to know the relative minimum. There is a relative minimum at what x value? The biggest piece of this video is identifying if a function is even or odd. So we call functions even and odd. Now there is two ways you can do this. You can decide if it's even or odd based on the graph or you can decide if it's even or odd based on the equation. And if it is even, when you plug a negative x into the equation, you'll get back what you started, the same exact equation. There should be no change. So you take your original function, put in a negative x and simplify, and you'll get back your original function. Then it's called an even function. If you're looking at the graph, you'll notice all three of these are even functions. And the reason is, is that they're all symmetric over the y-axis. If you fold them over the y-axis, you'll notice this symmetry. So we have y-axis symmetry on an even graph. So they're symmetrical over the y-axis. Now, if a function is odd, when you plug in a negative x, you're going to get out the negative entire function, meaning the opposite of negative x, of f of x. So all your signs are going to switch. You're going to get the opposite function. If that's the case, it's odd. Looking at the symmetry, you'll notice that these are all symmetrical over the origin, over the y equals x line. If I draw this y equals x line here, all of these are symmetrical over that line. So they're all symmetrical over the origin or the x, y equals x line. And that's how we know if a function is odd. So it's symmetric about the origin. Okay. So now let's take a look at some examples using those equations because that part's a little bit harder. Remember, in order to decide if a function is even or odd, we need to find f of negative x. That's the first step. And then we have to see what happens. So let's take a look at this first example. We're going to find f of negative x, meaning we're going to take a negative x and plug it in to our equation. When I do this and simplify, I get negative x cubed plus 6x. And now we want to compare. It looks like our x cubed was positive and it turned out negative. And our 6x was negative and turned out positive. Because all the signs flipped, now they all changed, the entire function changed, we're going to call this an odd function. When all the signs flip, it is an odd function. So this one would be odd. We'll do the same thing with the next one. We'll plug in a negative x. So we're going to get g of negative x. We'll have negative x to the fourth minus 2 times negative x squared. And once again, we'll simplify. When I do negative x to the fourth, that actually turns positive because it's negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x. In this case, we need to make sure to follow the order of operations and square the negative x first, and it turns positive. But then we're still multiplying it by a negative. So we get x to the fourth minus 2x squared. In this case, it looks like my signs stayed exactly the same. Since they stayed exactly the same and there were no changes, we call this an even function. When I plug in a negative x, I get back the same as if I were to plug in a positive x. That makes it even, and that's what gives you that y-axis symmetry.
Go ahead, pause your video, try the last one, see what happens. All right, did you get stuck? Notice that one sign stayed the same, but another sign changed. We had a mix happening here. We had both happening here. Since both happen here, we say this one is neither even or odd. So it's not always even or odd. Sometimes it's neither. Let's take a look at a couple graphs. Here's the first one, even or odd. So what kind of symmetry do we have? It looks to me like we have this y equals um, this y-axis symmetry. I can fold this over the y-axis and get the same thing. Remember, y-axis symmetry means it's even. Just to think about that negative x for a minute, if I plug in negative x, let's say if I plug in negative 3, notice you get the same answer if you plugged in positive 3. That's why we can say negative x is the same as f of x, the original. How about the next one? It looks to me like this is symmetric over the origin here. So this is an odd function. Now let's again talk about that negative x. Let's look at f of 1 for a minute. f of 1 is positive 1. Let's look at negative 1, though. What's f of negative 1? Notice that it's the opposite. Because they're opposites, that means it's odd. So f of x... Um, Negative f of x is the same thing as f of negative x when it's odd, and that's why. Here's your last one, even or odd. Hopefully you decided that this one was odd. Let's look here. f of 2, let's just take an example. f of 2, when x is 2, it looks like we get negative 2. And when uh, x is negative 2 we end up at positive 2. So they're opposites. That makes this one odd. Now, if you don't have either of those symmetries, you could have a neither. So there could be one that is neither. Here's your free response question for this function. I want to know, is it even odd or neither? And then this is where we'll end our video for the day.